Hey guys, it's a new year, it's a fresh start. And in this video, I just wanna go over some ways that you can get the best, the ultimate fresh start for 2020. Just some things that will enable you to really set off with a clean slate and full of energy and ideas for the new year. These are all things that I really like to do at the end of a year or beginning of a new year. And they are all things that help me live a more simple, intentional and manageable life by putting some structure into things that are quite easy to structure, I think, that really help me feel in control of my life and what I'm doing for the most part, as far as that's possible, of course. Bring a little bit of structure into your life can really help you spend your time in a way that is more valuable to you and make sure that you don't get caught up in all of these activities and tasks and things that you kind of just do because they happen aren't really contributing to any of your goals or anything that you want out of your life. First and foremost, I think this is the most important thing before you start doing anything else, and that is to review last year's New Year's resolutions and goals if you set any at the start of the year. I actually did this in my last video, and it is such a useful way to kind of check in with yourself, see where you are, see how you're doing, see whether the things that you wanted for yourself last year are things that you still want for yourself and whether you have been able to implement them and introduce them as new habits in your current day-to-day -day life. If there are some things that were goals and resolutions last year and that you still want for yourself but you haven't managed to achieve them, then this is a great time to look back at your year and try and figure out why it is that you didn't manage to achieve those goals and resolutions. Try and figure out if there is anything you could do differently to attain them this year. Now, it's really important to go into this with a curious mindset. So to view this exercise as a check-in or almost like a business meeting with yourself, try and see, you know, how you're doing. Stay clear from using this and a kind of excuse to criticize yourself. You don't want to beat yourself up over the fact that you didn't achieve those goals. We need to keep a kind of overhead view of this and um, just approach it very rationally and just try and figure out why it is that you didn't succeed and um, not beat yourself up over the fact that you didn't. You know, we're here to set a new fresh start and to do better this year. So let go of what was, learn from it and try to figure out what the little things are you can do to be better this year. So the next step, and I feel like this should be even before planning new goals and resolutions, and that is to do a brain dump. A brain dump is pretty much just a stream of consciousness that you get onto paper. You could write it down by hand or you could use, you know, some digital medium, but just sit down and write anything that comes to mind, anything that is kind of still bothering you, weighing you down, any things that you feel like you should do, anything you feel kind of guilty about, any tasks that you have been putting off but know that you really should do, things that still need cleaning around the house, things you need to purchase, people you need to call, appointments that you need to reschedule, anything that comes to mind, write it all down, get it all off your chest. And then the next step going from that is to go through everything you've written down and try and filter out anything that is actionable or requires attention or can be fixed relatively easily or through a bigger process that you might want to get started on. So what I really like to do is to organize my brain dumps into lists. So I will pick out anything that is a pretty straightforward to do, such as, you know, clean the fridge or call said person and just write them down in a to-do list. And then anything else that is kind of like bigger and you feel like you may want to reference again in the future, also, just write it down, categorize everything, give them little titles and basically make sure that all of this information is stored in a way where you can access it again in case you need it so that you are actually able to let it all out of your head and, you know, trust that it is still somewhere where it can be accessed and you don't have to hold it all up in here. It really helps relieve a lot of stress and it's a great thing to do every now and then, especially if you then resolve to actually take action on those things. So after you have done your brain dump, this is the time to start making some new goals and resolutions for the new year. You can of course take some of the brain dump items into consideration, but also any goals and resolutions that you want to take with you from last year that you did 
implement or maybe you failed to implement but would still like to do as well as anything else that has come up and that you would like to work on as a new goal or resolution and then from there the next step and this is very important is to take your calendar and block out times that you are going to be working on those goals and resolutions so for example if one of your goals is to start working out more go into your calendar and block out an hour every week at the same time that is going to be your gym time make it an appointment in your calendar and make sure that it's something you keep treat it as an actual appointment so if something else comes up that's maybe a little bit more important they are going to reschedule the gym appointment to a different time within the same week if your goal is to write a book schedule in writing time every week in your schedule maybe do it once a month but make sure that you block out time to work on your goals and resolutions right now and stick to it and actually keep that time blocked just for that one thing. If there is anything else that you want to do this year that is kind of time sensitive, like for example, take a sunny holiday or go get a dentist checkup twice a year, or maybe there is something you want to do before you turn 30. If there's anything time sensitive, also block it out in your calendar. Or maybe if you use a to-do app where you can assign dates to your to-dos, write them down, give them a proper category and give them a date so that that to-do will pop up at the time when you will have to do it. Now I have referred a couple of times to different tools that help you organize your life and be a little bit more intentional and productive with your time. Basically, if you have a set of tools like that, whether they be digital, like digital calendars, note-taking apps, to-do apps, or pen and paper, like a bullet journal or notebooks, that is called your system, your kind of information filing system. And I actually recently took a course, well recently a few weeks ago, I took a Skillshare course. It was a productivity masterclass by Thomas Frank, who is like a pretty big person in the productivity world. And it was called create a custom system that works. And in that course, he really walks you through all the steps you need to take to create a system like that, that is super functional, super easy to use and tailored for you personally using the apps and websites um, or tools that you personally like to use. And this has been super, super helpful. It has really helped me step up my calendar planning game. Since that course, I have like several separate calendars that are um, color coded. So I have one for personal events. I have one for work events. I have one that I share with Robert that is for hangouts with friends and just fun things like that. I have one to schedule in my workouts and sporting events and I have one for scouting that features all of our kind of regular meetings and camps and things like that. So that is a Skillshare course that has been very valuable in my life. Now today's video is very kindly sponsored by Skillshare. Thank you so much. Skillshare is an online learning community that helps you achieve your goals through online courses that you can share with other students. They have very applicable courses that you can use in real life. They offer short courses that are easy to fit into a busy lifestyle and they have so many different topics and kind of classes that they cover. There are loads and loads and loads of creative classes. I also learned some sewing basics through Skillshare a while back. Fine arts, writing, business, uh, design. There are so many things to explore on there. And Skillshare is also a very affordable resource, especially when you compare it to real life courses and workshops. So Skillshare is giving away two free months of premium membership to help you explore your creativity, productivity, or whatever it is that you want to learn about. If you click the link in the description box and after that, it's only around $10 a month. So definitely check out that course if you want to be more intentional with your planning and your note-taking and your to-do list apps. After you have scheduled in your time-sensitive items and your things that you want to make a habit of and you need to schedule in to actually do them, then it is time to go back to your brain dump to-do list and see if there are any minor things that you could take off right away and then go through them and do as many as possible, as many as you have time for. I'd suggest taking out a certain amount of time, like say three hours, maybe one day or one weekend, or maybe just half an hour if that's all you have, and just go through as many as possible and tick off those little to-dos. Book those appointments, call that friend, take out that recycling, do all of those little nagging tasks that are just weighing you down and that you'd really like to get rid of as soon as possible. Now is your chance. So now that we have gotten rid of some of that mental clutter, it is time to tackle physical space. Now the start of the year for me is the perfect time to go through the house and 
declutter see if there are any things that no longer serve you that you no longer get joy from that don't have a purpose things that are broken things that are worn out and beyond repair and things that you feel would be better suited to another person i personally keep a checklist of categories around the house that i feel like i should declutter periodically once a year i feel is a good amount of time for me there are categories like cosmetics kitchen drawers, closet of course, art supplies, pantry, sewing supplies, just pretty much any category that has a substantial amount of things in it in my home um, is on that list. And I like to just go through that list at the start of the year, see if everything I have in each category is still stuff that I want to keep. And if not, then this is the time to get rid of that. Now, if you feel like a full house declutter is too big of a project to take on right now, then again, just allocate a time slot or just do one or two categories or however many you feel like you can manage at this time and just go through those. Any little thing that you do will be a weight off your shoulder and you will see the results in physical form as well. It's a really good feeling to tackle something that has been bunging you for a long time. So I would suggest actually starting with the biggest problem area because once you get that ticked off, everything else will be so easy to go through. And then the next step, after you have done as much decluttering as you can bear, actually process everything that you have decluttered right away. So anything that needs to be recycled, take it to recycling. Anything that can be donated, donate it. And anything that you plan to sell, list it online straight away. Just take action with the items you have decluttered so that they aren't just sitting in a different place but still inside your home. So once you have done all of that, you have done your brain dump, you have done your decluttering round, you have scheduled in any important things, and don't forget about scheduling in some fun things, maybe some short holidays, some meetings with friends, some dinners, or just time for yourself, walks in nature, just really anything that you want to do this year, schedule it in. When you've done all of that, you are set to have an amazing 2020. You have done all you could to prepare, so congratulations. <laughs> if there's anything that you like to do to prepare for a new year, then please leave any suggestions you have in the comments below and we can all try and inspire each other. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, guys. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for loads more beauty and lifestyle content. I'd like to give a massive thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. There will be another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye!